Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. Something important this morning. You know, Pastor has been talking about the lifestyle, the prayer life of Jesus. And for some time, too, I've been doing some study on the life of Jesus and study on some other characters, too, to just pick out some lessons. You know, I used to say this. I said, if something is written in the Bible, it means that there is something God wants us to learn from it. It's not there by mistake, praise the Lord. And so this morning, we'll look at the life of Jesus from Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11, the temptation of Jesus and pick out some lessons from the first Corinthians. Before then, first Corinthians 12, sorry, 10, 1 to 12, gives us a history of what happened to the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness. How some of them tempted God, how they disobeyed God, what happened to them. And the Bible said that these things were written as an example so that we can see and not repeat the same mistakes, praise the Lord. The Bible said it's written for us as an admonition so that we don't follow the same path and repeat the same mistake. So when you read scriptures, when you read Bible stories, try to pick out lessons from it. I know there is something God wants us to learn. For every account in scriptures, for every record, every story, no matter what it is, the story of Goliath, you know, sometimes we see some of those stories like it's for Sunday school. But I tell you the truth, when you go through scriptures and dip yourself in scriptures, you see that there's something to learn from there. You know, whatever we are going through, the truth is the solution is in God's word. We keep saying this. It's in God's word. It's in God's word. All we need to do is just search scriptures and get get the answer to that problem. John chapter 1 verse 1 said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word is God. So the more of the word you have, it means that the more of God you have, right? Praise the Lord. And he said, all things were made through him. All things were made through the word. And if the word is God, it means that all things were made through God. The Bible said, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. In God is life. The life that you need is in God. The money that you need is in God. The prosperity that you want is in God. The children that you want is in God. The job that you want is in God. You know, sometimes we just feel like, okay, I'm not seeing God physically, so it doesn't work. Is this person I'm seeing physically that can give me the job? But the truth is, if God doesn't put it in the heart of that person, the person cannot meet your need. So that life we want is in God. Everything we would ever want in life is in God's word. And God is his word. The word is God. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, praise the Lord. So I want to encourage us this morning. Whatever we are going through, get into the word. Hallelujah. So we're looking at the life of Jesus, and I said there is no perfect example we can learn from other than Jesus. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, he said, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. If he was not following Christ, he wouldn't have that confidence to tell people, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, he's somebody that is sure of who he's following that can come and tell you, follow me as I'm following Christ. You know, for some of us, the truth is we can't really tell people to follow us because we don't even know who we are following. We're not following Christ. So if we tell people to follow us, of course, we're already leading them the wrong way. But Paul was so sure of who he was following. So he said, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I want us to know that no matter what we are going through, Jesus has also gone through that path. And that's why we've learned that he was 100% human and 100% God. And God is very wise. God is a wise God. I'm sure he allowed Jesus to come in the human form to make us understand that no matter what we are going through, if Jesus can go through it, we can also go through it. If Jesus was being tempted, it means that we can also be tempted. But he didn't fall for the temptation, so it means that we shouldn't fall for it, praise the Lord. So Jesus is a perfect example to follow. He has gone through that path. He has given us an example. He has shown us the way. And that's what we want to look at this morning. You know, when we were in school, you know this WWJD, how many of us know WWJD? 
JD. What will Jesus do? Hello? How many of us have heard that? Oh. What will Jesus do? And they gave us this band to always wear. It was written WWJD. And we used to carry it everywhere. And so when something wants to happen, the first thing we ask ourselves is, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? You know, we're so spiritual. Praise the Lord. After some time, we just discovered that... Some people don't even know where Jesus was. And now ask them, what would Jesus do? Leave that. But the truth is, we should be consistent in, follow, in following Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, somebody was giving a joke. He said he was flying. He was flying, and while he, when he entered the plane, that the person sitting close to him was a very big man. And the way he put it, he now said the man was spilling over to his own seat. And he was like... What kind of temptation is this? You know when we use those phrase temptation? And he was like, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And I said, ah. but Jesus never flew in an airplane. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So at that point, what would Jesus do? He was not like, what would I do? What would I do? What would Jesus do? And I said, but Jesus rose up dead people, isn't it? Isn't it? Jesus rose up dead people. And I said, okay, what would Jesus do? And I gave the man, foul. Good slap. See, rise up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> what would Jesus do? So in his own sense, he has just interpreted it the way he could. Praise the Lord. There's something we'll look at as we go to see how sometimes people just interpret scriptures to just suit what they want. Praise the Lord. But the truth is, what will Jesus do? We should ask ourselves that question all the time. Somebody is annoying you. You are so pissed off. What will you do? What will Jesus do at that point? Praise the Lord. I think if we keep asking ourselves that question, it's going to help us. It's going to save us from a whole lot of trouble. So let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Okay, Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11. Okay. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, again, the devil keeps asking him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Then Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Verse 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written. I want us to be th taking note of some of these phrases. Jesus will always say, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Praise the Lord. The truth is, if Jesus has gone through this process, I want you to know that definitely we'll go through it. As long as we are in this world, we we'll always face temptation. We we'll always come to the place where we will be tempted. It will always be there. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says that no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Now, the truth is, there is no temptation that we we'll face that is new. The Bible said it is common to man, even Jesus. He said, but God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. 
Bible said, but the temptation in the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Bear it in the sense that you will not fall for it. So if the scriptures here is telling us that there is no temptation that will come to us that is not common to man, that God will always make a way of escape, it means that we don't have an excuse, right? Hello? It means we don't have an excuse. So the truth is we just need to depend on the Lord to help us. That is why it's good we study scriptures and have a good knowledge of it. If we, if we look at this account, Jesus was always saying it is written. He had a good knowledge of scriptures. He was quoting from Deuteronomy. It, was, it is written, it is written. You need to have a good knowledge of scriptures. You need to depend on the Lord to help you. Since God is saying there is a way out, then there is a way out. So if you keep falling for that thing, you don't have an excuse. We don't have an excuse. We need to depend on the Lord. I read the story of a girl and they asked her, have you ever been tempted to do something that is wrong? And she said, yes, of course. But whenever the tempter knocks at the door of my heart, I just pray, Lord Jesus, go to the door for me. Of course, if Jesus is answering the door, you know what that means. The devil cannot come in. The tempter cannot come in. So she's prepared with the word to always give it back to the devil, to the tempter. Jesus, go to the door for me. We need to depend on the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need to trust the Lord to help us. We should stop making excuses. Oh, nobody is perfect. Oh, we are just human. Oh, it is not my fault. Oh, it is the devil's fault. It is the devil's fault. It is the devil's fault. The truth is we must come to that place where we can own up to our responsibilities. Take charge of your life and tell yourself, this thing, this one, I'm going to be in charge. Praise the Lord. You know, somebody was giving a joke and he said he saw the devil crying. Seriously crying. And he was like, ah, devil, you are crying. What happened? And the devil laughed. Why will I not cry? This one will still say it is the devil. That one will go and tell her, say it is the devil. Everything it is the devil. Even the one I did not do, they say it is me. This broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of Present Truth. To become a partner, please call plus 234 805 888 7575. God bless you. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. Purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Praise the Lord. You know how it's so easy for us to just do stuff and say, oh, it's the devil's, it's the devil's handwork. No more excuses. There is a way out. That's what I want us to know this morning. There is a way out. All you need to do is be determined in your heart. And tell yourself, there is a way out. Praise the Lord. So we should stop blaming the devil so that... And somebody say, hey, it's really the devil now. Oh, Allah, keep saying it is the devil. Praise the Lord. The truth is we have power over the devil. As long as you are born again, as long as you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have power over the devil. And that's why the Bible said in uh, James chapter 4, verse 7, it said, therefore, submit to God. So as long as you've accepted the gift of salvation, you have, you've accept, uh, accepted Christ into your heart, you are submitting to him, you have the power to resist. It's not said, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So as long as you are submitting to the Lord, you have power to resist him. You have power to resist whatever thought is coming to your heart. You have power to resist whatever temptation is coming. You have the power to resist it. Praise the Lord. I want you to tell yourself this morning, I have the power to resist the devil. And the Bible said he would do what? Will he stay there? He will flee. Praise the Lord. He will flee. 
Authority has been given to us. Just use it. But the most important thing there, submit to God first. Make sure your ways are right with God. Make sure you are submitting to him. Praise the Lord. And he will flee. Hallelujah. You know, we have the right to resist every thought, like I said. You know, um, Ashimoloa used to call it stinking thinking. All those stinking thinking thoughts that keep, keeps coming to our minds. You can stop it, praise the Lord. You have the power to do that. You have the power to take captive every thought that wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of God in our lives. We can do that. Resist the devil and he will flee. Praise the Lord. And there's something else I want to bring out here this morning. Apart from the place of resisting, there's also the place of fleeing. Praise the Lord. Like I said, if something is written in the Bible, it's very important. God is so wise that if it's not important, he will not tell you that in this area, do this. In this area, do this. We've been told to resist. or me to God, resist the devil and he will flee. But in another place, you are the one that will do the fleeing. Praise the Lord. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6.18. 1 Corinthians 6.18. Let's see the area where we have to do the fleeing. 1 Corinthians 6.18. It says, flee sexual immorality. Flee what? Hello, flee what? Is there anybody here that doesn't know what sexual immorality is? We all know. Praise the Lord. He now said, every sin that a man does, it's outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? You are not your own. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that God has given to you. Your body is not your own. I'm not the one saying it. It is here. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Maybe we should read it together. Can we read it together, please? Let's go. Verse 19. And the Bible said, your body is the temple. Let's go. Or and you are not your own. So if we are here and we are still saying, it is my life, I can do whatever I want, that is it. It is not your life, praise the Lord. The body is not your own. It is written there. Your body is just the temple of the Holy Spirit. Whatever sin we do, or any other, the Bible said it's outside the body. But this one, and that's why God said, flee. Run from it. Fleeing time is not the time of negotiating. Fleeing time is not the time of explaining. And no, you know now. And no. God said, flee. If he's if he saying flee, you should flee. That's not the time to speak in tongues. <laughs> that's not the time to even resist. Flee. Be like Joseph, hallelujah, and flee. You know, Joseph started with, oh, how can I do this to God and my master? <laughs> but when he saw that it was not working, he now remembered that this one is the fleeing time. It's not the time to talk. The Bible said he left his clothes behind and he took off. Leave it. Leave your wig. Leave your clothes. Whatever you want to leave, leave your underpants. Leave it. Even if you need to run out naked, run like a madman. Let them see you running like a madman. As long as you've saved yourself, flee. Bible said, flee youthful lust. Flee it. Everything that wants to lure you, flee from it. He said, we should avoid every appearances of evil. Leave it. Run from it. Flee. If only, like I said, the solution to everything is in the word. You know, the next thing I want to do now is just, just pick things and just study and just bring them out from the Word. Everything is in the Word. Everything. So if God is telling us to run, 
Please, let's obey. Let's just obey the word. Let's be like Joseph and not like David. You know what happened to King David? I think we should. Let's go to. Um, where's that scriptures again? I think it's in Second Samuel. Second Samuel eleven. Second Samuel eleven. Can we just read that quickly? Second Samuel eleven from verse one. You know, if David had known better, he would have, he would have obeyed these scriptures. Second Samuel eleven verse one. The Bible said it happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. You know, when I was reading these scriptures, I was asking myself, I said, in the first place, was David supposed to be in the house? Hello? Let's talk now. Maybe I'm the one that is... Was he supposed to be in the house? Maybe if we see David, we would have asked him to tell us why he was he in the house. The Bible said, in the time when kings go out to battle. So he was not supposed to be at home. But we read that and say, but David remained at Jerusalem. Well, we don't know why, but let's go on. Let's go on, verse 2. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. You know, the truth is, we, sh we should trust God to, to always lead us. You know, from where we read in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible said, and the Spirit led, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, it was the Spirit that led Jesus. The truth is, in life, may we not be in a place where we, we led ourselves. Praise the Lord. Because if the Spirit is leading you, the Spirit will help you. When God said he will make a way out, he will make a way out when the Spirit is leading you through that process. Because when you get to that place, the Spirit of God will always give you a scriptures that you always use to fight against the tempter. Like Jesus, the Spirit was there with him. Jesus was always saying, it is written. If you go on your own, if you do things on your own, if you feel like it is my life, I can do whatever I want to do with it, the truth is you will fall for it. And just, uh, De David went up on the roof, I think, at the wrong time. Because, like I said, temptation will always be there. It will always come. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. I don't blame David. The woman, when, you know, when the Bible, like I said, if something is in the Bible, <laughs> the Bible said she was beautiful to behold. You know, um, we were watching a message in the house and Bishop Doug was preaching and he said that a, a, a minister was ministering and a woman came, I think the woman that was supposed to preach, and that the way she was dressed, wow. She was looking, you know, when the Bible described this type, she was like that. And that, I know sometimes, ladies, we need to be very careful too, the way we, we package those things. And she packaged it as in, praise the Lord. And she entered and, wow. Wow. And when it was time to introduce, <laughs> introduce this lady, the mind of this man has, in fact, has gone. See, the truth is, <laughs> I don't know how to put it now, but Avoid every appearances of evil, right? But when they still come, try to close your eyes to it. If, if, if it were me, if it were me, see, I don't mind. Even if I'm the one standing here now and I see the temptation coming and the Bible says flee. Church, please, I'll tell you I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. And I will take off. If you want to go out tomorrow and say, ah, pastor's wife ran away from the pulpit, I don't care. I'm saving myself. And the pastor was looking. And when it was time to now introduce the lady, instead of now saying, today we have a powerful woman of God in the house, and before he knew it, he now said, and she has very big breasts. 
Praise the Lord. People were laughing, and Doug said, it's a true story. He said it's a true story. Because he just allowed his mind to just, he was just focusing on it. And before he knew it, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart. He has already filled his heart with it. So he didn't know when it just came out. Praise the Lord. Bible said, and the woman was beautiful to behold. Can we go on? Verse 3. So David sent. Now, like I said, the truth is, temptation will always be there. Because I asked myself, why was Bathsheba even baiting in a place where they can see her? Hello? Are we listening together? Why was she baiting in a place where they can see her? Let's leave that. Like I said, temptation will always come knocking at your door. That's what happened to David. Now, if David had known better, he would have just gone into his house, shut his door, and begin to play worship songs, and begin to pray in tongues, and take scriptures, and tell his servant, give me my armor, let me have my spirit, I'm calling, I'm going out, and just take off. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at Pastor Max at NG. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.